What's up guys? We got another game with the black pieces against Passerby. He's rated 1329, we're rated 1392. We're almost at 1400. I don't think this game will bring us there, but we'll be very close. Um, he launches the pawns in the center, and so we're going to play the perk defense. Because he brings out both of his knights, this is a classical variation. So we just develop our bishop, he develops his. So his is a solid passive setup, that's fine. We castle. Now we have a solid passive setup, that's fine. Um, he has pawns in the center, so we're gonna, now that we're castled, we need to strike out at the center, but he does it first. Now we always need to know, like, watch out for e5. He pushes, so let's say we take. If he takes with the pawn, we can take with the queen, he can take with something, and then our knight hanging. Do we have a square for it? That's the question. Well, if he took with the knight, we'd have the center. If he took with the bishop, maybe we have knight g4 hitting the pawn twice. So let's take the pawn. He could take with the knight. Okay, so he takes with the pawn. Um, if he takes us, he develops our rook. So we don't necessarily need to take, maybe. That's a, something to think about. Um, we are going to take. It obviously re relieves pressure from our position. And he takes with the knight, so that undefends these squares, which means that now our knight has central squares to jump to, which is good. Um, potentially, we can still attack this pawn. So if we go here, how does he defend it a second time? He has to go something like this. We bring our knight out, third attacker. He can't defend it a third time. Maybe he tries to sack it, also not good. So even though we have central squares to jump to, which is normally what you look for when they push e5, you're also looking for knight g4 opportunities to win the pawn. Um, he doesn't defend the pawn. Instead, he develops a piece with a counterattack that is sensible. Um, however, I'm going to develop a piece, defend the pawn, and attack the pawn. Multi-purpose move. And now I can capture next. He could try to attack my knight to, to remove the defense, but no. He moves his knight to the side. What does this threaten? Threatens my knight, even though it's protected. Um, knight doesn't have any good jump, so it's misplaced here. It doesn't belong here. This is not a real threat, so it's a waste of time. If anything, improve your other knight because it doesn't, you know, d1 is the worst square for it. You want a long castle or a short castle, you want to put your rook there. Terrible move. So now, I'm, even though it's not hanging, I'm still, I still don't want it loose in his territory for no reason. I'm going to take a free pawn and put it in the center. And now these pieces are very awkward looking. Um, so he just castles. This knight is very misplaced in the back. So I'm going to, I want to continue my development unless I see a forcing powerful move. For example, this in the center is fairly powerful because his bishop doesn't have anywhere to go. So because the center is completely open um, and moves like this have potential, I think I'm going to scoop that bishop even at the cost of a pawn. Now you definitely don't need to give away pawns, but having the bishop pair on an open board like this it's just going to make my life so much easier. Um, so he moves the bishop, but I can still take it and ruin his pawn structure. So that's what I'm going to do. And then in this way... Okay, so we were back here. He takes. I move my rook. He goes somewhere. I take the bishop with check. So maybe he couldn't ever take this pawn, but... Okay, so he takes back this way. If you give a check, and he goes here, that does nothing but trap your own knight. This just helps him develop. So those are bad moves. Um, we have a bishop. This pawn's still hanging. So... Okay, let's... No reason to hang the pawn. Put it in the center. Defend the knight. Okay, but arms should block in the diagonal. Well, it's fine. Um, I doubt this pawn is long for this world anyway, so he goes back to develop to hit the knight, but I would gladly take his other bishop for a knight. Also, this pawn would completely...
completely block his knight, so that would be a terrible move for him. I'm going to ignore him and develop my bishop to his most natural square. Controls a lot of squares. Now you can play things like f5. He finally brings his knight out. Um, not much to say about that except he should have done it a long time ago. And okay, I, I could develop rooks, but I noticed the opportunity that I had last turn, which is to attack his rook and then take the bishop. The downside of doing this operation for me is, well, one, it takes time, right? Time that he now is developing because his rooks wants to go here anyway. Two, it connects his pawns in the center, so that's not good for me because this was an easy target. And three, it opens up his other rooks. That's all bad things. But terrible knight, Ter uh, normal knight, but my bishops are just way better. So I don't care. I'm doing. I'm going to help him out a little bit. And then I'm going to develop my rook to the central open file with a threat, or semi-open file. Moves to keep in mind. C6, blunts the knight, blunts the rook. Moves to keep in mind. Bishop takes if knight moves. Moves to keep in mind. F5, E4, opening my bishop. Moves to keep in mind. Tempo on the knight if it ever leads to a winning line. Okay, so what did he do? He moves his rook over to defend the knight, but that removes the free f file I gave him. He probably couldn't do much with it anyway, but because I'm going to play a 5 at some point. And even, like, this is the most solid thing ever, so. Yeah, he can't really do anything in the f file, so he moves away. Defends the pawn, whatever. Um, I'm going to control some more cent central squares by playing f5. He finally improves his knight back to its natural square. Hates a pawn. I don't want to push because he's going to block it. Unless there's something there. So I'm actually going to control him from pushing even further by going c5 and b6 I'm just gonna I don't know just gain some space leave this as you know easy targets they look like backward pawns kind of even though they're not it feels like it though and he goes here he has some jumps but at the end of the day they don't actually do anything this pawn is hit uh, too by the rook, so that's something to keep in mind. Moving this knight undefends this pawn though, so we can always trade a bunch of pawns. If I go here and he goes here, this pawn's hanging again as well as my bishop, so you take, he takes. I guess we can go for that. What else do we have? There's also takes. There's also just like b6. That way we want the c pawn, but we don't care about the a pawn. So if we go b6, he can take the a pawn. But then once we go here, we can win. I mean, I don't, I'm going to go b6. I don't really care about the a pawn. I don't care. He doesn't even take it. He goes for the bishop pair. But now his knight's stuck in my territory, and he didn't even get a pawn. So that was wrong. Nice fork, guy. The passerby forgot that bishops also go backwards. So now he's just, you know, desperate. He has nothing to do. He just lost a piece. He goes before, maybe trying to open some lines. I don't know. He has nothing to do. So I'm going to do a forcing move, attack his knight, open my bishop, and if he pushes, now this is free to move. Um, he takes, I take again a forcing move, so he has to respond. And now there's no pawn that could possibly impede any of my bishops. They're fully free. Okay, so he puts his knight here, but that blocks the connection between our rooks. I'm going to take his free pawn since he gave me a free pawn. And he's going to take my free pawn since I gave him a free pawn. But I'm of a piece, so I'm going to trade a rook. He's going to take it. I don't know. And then I'm just going to move my rook to an open file and do something. He 
He puts his knight here, but it blocks his own rook from coming in and doesn't do anything, but because I was going to move my rook anyway. And these two moves are protected. And then this causes the third one to be protected. And that's a queening operation. His knight's not doing anything. He's just going back and forth. Congratulations. We push the pawn. Now he gives a check. We go up. And then he gives, I don't know, this check. We go up. He takes our bishop. He feels really good about himself. I don't know what he's trying to do. I'm not going to allow any of that. Maybe I should. Here, 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 the end. Eh, we'll just get a queen. That's not a move, is it? I mean, he can win a pawn, but that doesn't matter. But now his knight's hit. So whenever you walk into forcing moves like this, you lose time. Time that I'm about to queen. So like I could take his knight, but if I look at this position, I, I didn't even click. I was going to say, I, you don't even want to take the knight. Uh, you just want to get a queen. But I accidentally took the knight, but I'll still get a queen. Come on, guy, what are you doing? So, that was weird, but we got that one. We go into another game. We finally play someone 1400, 1402, V-pin 88. He does the, what I thought was going to be the French, but then he does A6 on move 2. I'm not familiar with what's happening, so I'm just going to develop this bishop in case I want to cast a long. Okay, now I don't want to cast a long because he's doing this weird thing on this side early. So I want to castle short. So start developing the other side. Like when, when a low rated player does some weird stuff, it's nice to castle long and attack, but if you're going to pawn storm you like this, you don't want to do it probably. So now he brings his queen out. Can't be good. Put some pressure, but it's going to get kicked around by like a thousand different things, starting with, but not limited to, e5. Opening up our bishop. If he castles long, he already created so much weakness. If he castles short, we kind of have an attack brewing, so it's going to be nice. I'm going to develop my knight here. One, so it doesn't run into a tempo move. Two, I may want to play c3 at some point depending what he does. Okay, so he goes here anyway, so that makes no sense. Um, drawback, waste of time, threat, none. Also, undefends this square for my pieces, so I don't get it. Okay, he still isn't developed. I'm gonna try to go F4. Yes, he has one check, doesn't matter, because he's easily stoppable and f5 and just rip open the king side it, this does it is committal but he's underdeveloped so who cares he fianchettos which controls some stuff finally some like uh, normal stuff on his part good job so what do we want to do we want to develop still we we'll just put our knight to its most natural square prepare castling you could probably play e5 already but whatever We'll just get our king to safety since he's wasting time and making more weaknesses. For example, moving this pawn weakens the g6 square. Moving this pawn, g5, weakens the dark, so many squares. All weakens these four. So these are bad moves. Um, now he has no safe place to castle. And, and this pawn's hanging. So I'm going to take it because I win a pawn comes with tempo on the queen or maybe I want to take with the knight and it opens up this he probably says oh well now I have a rook file towards your king but that's all you're gonna have it's all you're gonna have so I don't care about that um, which piece to take this with let's go with the bishop since it's our technical bad bishop and it's forcing um, 
We're gonna do this. He can take and take, but then his rook's hanging. So that would lose him the exchange. Like, he took a bishop. We take a bishop, and his rook's hanging. Okay, so he does, but maybe we don't want to take it. And that might sound crazy. Maybe we go... Eh, maybe we take it. Let's just take it. <laughs> and he'll go for some type of checkmate. Or I thought he was going to go for some type of checkmate. Instead, he traps the bishop. That's fair, but his knights can't develop. So these guys are going to have some tea in the back. They're friends now. Let's bring the queen in with what I was going to do before, but I thought maybe if he runs, I don't get, like, let's say he moves the rook, I take the pawn, he moves the king. If I don't have a follow-up, his rook escapes, so I just took the rook first. Now this threat comes, he can only defend it with the queen or the rook somehow. I guess knight h6 is the way, but that's suspicious. Maybe it's his best move, actually. So he defends with the rook, but... His position looks terrible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this rook. And I'm just going to put the other one here and make triple. i got nothing else to do, right? Everything, Anything else I do is pawn moves. So if he ever tries to double stack like this, um, I can just lift my pawn. I can move my queen. Um, even if he took, like that's not actually checkmate. But you obviously don't want to let him take. We'll just go h3. We have no back rank issues. And a little luft. He goes f5, which would be a nice way to close it down if en passant didn't exist. En passant does develop his pieces for him, but it does kind of open up the center for me. Um, so I'm going to do that. Since his king is extremely weak and this guy's stuck. Um, another benefit is his knight is hanging, so I'm going to take it. I was just going to triple, but if his knight's hanging, he might as well get the free piece. And now is the perfect time to resign. That way I can go make myself some iced tea in a giant bottle. But he doesn't want me to be hydrated. Instead, he wants to bring his queen, what just happened, into my territory and pin my rook. This threatens pressure on my position. No actual threat. The drawback is his queen was here. When you move the queen, right, everything it was defending chain or attacking changes so as soon as you move it here for example it's no longer touching any of these squares for starters so can i use any of those squares yes queen in checkmate and that's the point of asking the question what is the drawback it's not necessarily a drawback it's the same thing as saying what observations can i make what changed on the board what squares are no longer being controlled by the queen? It's that concept. What is the drawback? It's just noticing a change and the uh, potential to take advantage. All right, good games. Send me your classical or uh, rapid games. Good luck on your climb, guys.